we're going to say the mortgage interest. Uh, let's go to the interest is we said on the personal side, uh, one three mortgage interest one three five oh, and then the taxes we said was 900. So taxes we're going to say on the real estate was 900. Now that's not going to be enough to kick me over the standard deduction, which in this case is the 12,950, but that mortgage interest and the property taxes as well as possibly state taxes are usually the thing that could possibly kick people over in that if I looked at the schedule A, if these amounts were greater than the standard deduction, then we'd be able to take those amounts. So we have to think about whether or not uh, we're going to get the benefit from the the mortgage interest and the real estate taxes and properly allocate them between a Schedule A and a Schedule E. Now, then we would also have to put on the books the uh, depreciation of the property. And we'd have to think about you know what the cost of the property is. If we purchased it, it would be for more straightforward. If we converted it, then we got to compare our cost basis to to the fair market value. We've got to make sure that we're breaking out building versus uh, the land. So let's first just put that on the books. I'm going to say that we have a depreciable item. Now I'm going to indicate to the software that the the basis is 39,000 for the building and 7,000 for the land. The land is not going to be depreciated. The building will, but it's going to be broken out. 25% of that is going to be the depreciable uh, our component to it. So if I go back on over and I say, okay, what happens with the depreciation schedules? So now it's the cost. Let's go to this one is 39,000. Uh, 25 percent of that is going to be that 7,950 for the depreciable basis because that's the amount I'm assuming is the rental property using uh, our percentage. And then we have the straight line method. It's a mid month convention 27.5. This is the rate from the table gets us to that uh, 310. And then if you went to depreciation for the next year, you could see it would be uh, 355 and that depreciation is going to continue out for uh, for the 27.5 years. The land not depreciated. So if I go back on over to the Schedule E, we have now uh, added the depreciation to our calculation. If I was to do my bookkeeping, then of course, that's something that I would probably need to add to my bookkeeping that will be dependent upon the calculation. By my calculations. From you know, the tax software to get this number to the bottom line in our tax system, adding, you know, the depreciation deduction to our calculation. Now, another scenario that is similar to this scenario is let, let's say that we, we had, I'm going to delete this column, that we had someone that converted their personal property to the rental property. And then they had a partial year of rental in the first year. So now you can have a similar situation with your income statement that needs to be broken out in the portion that is personal versus uh, the business portion that's going to be broken out. So for example, if I if I have these same numbers over here representing this is income, 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 representing the income uh, and expenses for the entire year, then I've got to say, okay, what let's say the income let's let's say the income was actually 11 months of renting let's say it was 750 times 11 so that's going to be the income that we had the expenses down below i'm going to delete these and i'm going to come up with a new ratio analysis it's going to be that months of the year for the rental let's say was only uh was 11 months rental and then we're saying months for personal so let's say it was was one month so 11 this is going to be months for rental versus months for personal is uh one so that means it's going to be equal to so the total months of course is 12 so months in year 12 i'm going to underline this 
or un underline. So the amount that's gonna be allocable to the rental is gonna be equal to 11 over 12, the ratio 11 over 12, 91.67% because that because we converted it uh, starting at the end of, you know, in February. So you got 11 months rental, one month personal, then you've got a similar breakout. The rental income is what it is because obviously it, when it was personal, we wouldn't have had any rental income. And then the, the rental side is gonna be this times this again. I'm gonna select F4 so that I can copy that down. However, if I had repairs that were designed just for the rental during the rental time, I'm, I, could, I could assign that just to the rental side of things. The personal side is gonna be this minus this copying that down and then I could sum it up summing up there's going to be our expenses on uh, that scenario uh, type of situation so a similar a similar kind of ratio calculation is is going to be necessary you know when that conversion happened but this time instead of happening all every year it would only happen in that first month and then we've got our, our adjustment here for our rental income and then our depreciation we'd have a similar kind of thing for the depreciation but let's put this into our system i'm going to imagine the depreciation is the same but now i'm not going to be breaking it out between personal uh, and business use we're just going to have that 11 months, which will be calculated by the system because I put it on there. It's going to use that mid month uh, convention. So now the depreciation I'm assuming is going to be that 39,000 again, but we're not allocating between business and personal. We're just going to say that we put it on the books, you know, in, in the, uh, in the first or the second month, which means it's going to use a mid month convention, straight line, mid month convention in order to get this time to the 1,241, which is gonna pull into the schedule E. So now we've got our calculation here. There's uh, the depreciation calculation. Now remember that when the conversion happens, because we didn't purchase the property, we might have to do some kind of calculation for what, for what our basis is and compare it to the fair market value. And that might look something, something like this. We'd say, well, we had the, the house cost before we converted it, whenever we bought it, 25,000. And we're gonna say, then we remodeled it. Remodeled kitchen is gonna be 4,200. We'll say when we did that, recreation room we added was 5,800. Good times in that room. New roof improvement, one six and patio and deck we're going to say 2,400. And so that's where we're getting our adjusted basis in the building because we broke out building versus the land. The depreciable component is the 30, the 39,000. We'd have to do some kind of calculation like that, which can be a little bit messy on the personal side of things because the personal residence, you might not be tracking as much of the cost of things that you did because you, you're not getting the benefit of depreciating it at the point in time that it's happening because it's personal side of things. But then when you sell it or convert it, it becomes important because we need to compare this adjusted basis to the fair market value and basically take the lower one.